think it's apt that I wore a blood red v-neck to talk about V-Rising. What up viewers, what up, what up, Calc Soups here and welcome to The Friend Zone, a monthly video game show where I discuss the latest games with my friends. Uh, we sat down last month and uh, now we're here to discuss a vampire, a new early access vampire survival game, V Rising. Uh, we'll be discussing as always what we were expecting and how would we describe it. Uh, we'll walk through a little bit of the gameplay, some of the survival elements, um, particular builds that people had, which spells and weapons and blood types they liked. Um, we'll talk about base building and building up an undead army. Uh, we'll talk about uh, the bosses, some of our favorite ones, some of our least favorite ones, um, the aesthetic, the game was really pretty. Uh, we'll talk about PvP and I think eventually we'll talk about kind of our overall opinion kind of on these like early access survival games. Uh, we'll talk about servers and server settings and stuff like that. Um, any future content that we're looking forward to. And then last but not least, we'll always wrap it up with our final thoughts. So without further ado, let's jump in and meet the friends. Hello, friends of the friend zone. Hello. Hello. Thank you for showing up. Let's uh, let's walk through the introductions. Everybody say hi to Kevin. Oh, hi, everybody. I'm Kevin. I'm up first, and I still have garlic stacks on me, I think. Yes, <laughs> garlic stacks. And we got Patrick. Hello. I hope you're excited to listen about all the fun vampire stuff we did. <laughs> we got John. Hello, I'm uh, I'm new here, but I am a bit of a Twitch celebrity. If you're part of the mm. dozens of uh, Blood Bowl Twitch community members, Ooh, we got a three, five, eight in the house. We've got uh, we've got a celebrity in the house. Last but not least, we have George. Hello, I'm uh, I'm the finance <clears throat> guy, so people don't take my opinion seriously. That's true. Much. Yes, yes. Uh, well, great. Um, first, as always, we uh, we can talk about kind of what we were expecting and how we would how would we describe it um i think initially the the uh, the first reaction to it was like valheim with uh w with vampires but i don't know that that's necessarily how, how i describe it after playing the game not how i would describe it at all yeah <laughs> agree Agreed. That that's how it was sold to me, and that was my really? expectation. Who, yes. who described it like that? <laughs> no, I, I the, think the Steam community. I yeah, yeah, I think yeah. That's, Polygon or I something. Think before we started playing it, that was definitely like. A, yeah, I guess I guess Valheim was game. was mentioned several times before it released. That's true. Yeah. In a lot of the Twitch reviews and our Steam reviews and stuff. Yeah, I mean the surface it it has some very light building. I mean, and it's then adventuring. It's just, it's got survival and building mechanics, I guess, but that's about yeah. where the similarities end. <laughs> yeah. I would almost go so far as to say that it, it actually fills a lot of the gaps that I found lacking in Valheim, but mm. it does not contain any of the draws of Valheim. <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah. That yeah, sounds accurate. Like yeah. yeah. So the first thing we did is uh, you like wake up in the coffin and, and like all of a sudden now you're stuck with a like isometric view. And uh, and you're just like casting off spells, like these weird abilities. So, yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't know if it's more Diablo esque or. Um... Well, I mean, here's the real thing. Like, has any has anybody, myself included, played Battle Right? Hmm. No. No. Battle Right is the companies that made V Rising, which I am blanking on the name of the company. That is like the other game, like the game that they made before this. And it's sort of an arena battler, but okay. the com the combat to V Rising is is very similar. Like it's an isometric camera view, and it's got kind of the the almost MOBA like uh, you know yeah. camera setup with with you know active dodging and stuff like that. Developers so, Stunlock. Stunlock, that's yeah. right. Um, yeah, and I think. Correct me if I. I'm pretty sure it's battle right. No, you're right. It, yeah, yeah, 2016 was their battle yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like even <clears throat> like some of the abilities in V Rising apparently very similar to like some battle right characters and stuff. Like there's okay. a lot of battle right DNA in especially the way the combat works in V Rising. So 
I guess if you played Battle Right, then you really know what you're getting into. <laughs> for this um, one. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, like, very much, very MOBA esque as far as, like, the combat and the. And the. Yeah, just the combat and the kind of core gameplay. Yeah, I mean, so much, honestly, because I think it feels really good. They, they nailed mm -hmm. that. Oh, yeah. Um, but so much so that I'm like, I don't know why there's survival and building elements to a certain degree. Yeah. That actually is a good point. Yeah. Cause like I'm unfamiliar with MOBA games. I've never played any, I never even played Diablo, but it definitely, I was expecting Valheim style, like, Oh, survival is the key thing. And we're going to toss in some sort of combat system and hopefully it'll be good enough. And it was a very good combat system. I found it very robust and interesting, but it like completely flipped my expectations, and I I definitely was like I feel like there's two separate games here. One of them is lacking, and that's the survival part of it. And mm -hmm. now I'm playing a game that usually, if it had been billed to me as it was, I wouldn't have bought. You know, like I wouldn't have played it. But I don't mm -hmm. regret it. Like I've I've really enjoyed the game. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, I do <clears throat> agree. It the. Uh... The survival elements feel kind of boilerplate in the way that it's like, oh, survival games are really popular on Steam Early yeah. Access, and so a lot of them have like really similar mechanics, and I, I feel like there's not a ton of... I mean, you know, there were some, some differences here, but I feel like that's an aspect on a lot of games where there's not like a ton of innovation going on as far as how survival mechanics function. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. I will say I think the thing the thing that stands out the most in V Rising compared to the sort like Eco and yeah. and Valheim like that we've all been kind of playing in the last year was the blood system like hunting for good blood and getting servants and things like that that felt very unique uh to the game that made it yeah. worth having the survival element but like it would not scratch the itch of like building and customization if that's what you were looking for. I definitely yeah I I think the the survival side of it, like the fact that there's not just like a health bar, like a food bar and a drink bar. I mean, you're a vampire, so you have a blood bar. But that that part of it, like as far as keeping yourself alive, is very like easy and yeah, it's, but, it's yeah, almost, that's, it's that's my biggest complaint with the survival. It's like I don't feel yeah. like I'm surviving. Yeah, 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 for sure. It's very much yeah. It's like why why even have these survival mechanics? Surviving is not. It's so, yeah, it's so, hard, like, hard I was able to log on and just, like, play for, like, 20 minutes and keep my blood pool yeah. or whatever yeah. up behind yeah. my think last for five days. I, like, think yeah. oh, I think the elephant, I think the elephant in the room, though, is that, and we'll probably talk about it in the PvP section, is that our approach to this game was kind of counterintuitive yeah. to what the developers want this game uh, to be, in my is, opinion. That's a really good point, and that's probably a good disclaimer to throw up on this. We do not explore <laughs> yes. PvP, like, at yeah. all. Yeah, we should like, probably... We or even PvP, PvP correctly, like, because we were just, at most, four people on at once doing things, at most, you know? Yeah, yeah. We, were, it, we were on a private server with PvP, turned off and we were mostly just helping each other or doing our own thing so yeah so there was very little in our way for advancing and doing things other than time and you know just making sure that we had multiple people to go after a, a v boss or something like yeah. that yeah and i know we're going to talk more about pvp later but yeah. uh but yeah that's a that's an important disclaimer for listening to all of our stuff so you know yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, an easy I, I, game to survive when there's nothing competing against you yes. <laughs> yeah. i mean yeah. that said I, the game is built in it to allow like a pve like mode like that's what yeah. it's you know yeah. like that's by design that's not like a hack or a mod or something so it's right like, right we definitely were playing it not, not to like what is probably expected but it is still like a viable option cool. because they yeah. provide it yeah. and so I just think it it's doesn't, fair to it doesn't, say that, it, yeah, it our play doesn't like. I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't discount. Yeah, yeah. We're there. There's yeah. just aspects of the game that we didn't. Yeah. Uh, we didn't. Touch. We didn't touch. Exactly. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, I would. I would add, and this is across, you know, most game developers, even in board game space, uh, because they want to reach the biggest available audience for unit sales. Oh yeah. yeah they are compelled to come up with a PvE game, a PvP game, 
the ability to play solo yeah. or with friends. And, and just when you yeah. throw in all of those things to the pool, some of the systems don't stand out anymore. Sure. So, yeah. yeah. This game is probably combat. it was probably designed PvP based on the fact that the combat's the forefront. Mm -hmm. The survival aspects are sort of in the back because if you get raided and lose your base, you need to be able to rebuild it. You know. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. what I mean. That's what we said. So we're getting way ahead of ourselves here, but yeah. that's what we, you and I, George, said so many times playing it. Is like there's so many skills that are just pointless to use in the hardest fights, which are V boss yes. fights in PVE that yeah. are definitely designed to have value in PvP. Yeah, a lot of yeah. shields yeah. and stuff. But it, it's well, it, you can tell that it's a mm. it's coming from a space where they probably designed a PvP game and said, oh, but we need to be able to have you know yeah. the, the solo player yeah. or the the co-op team be able to access it, and it yeah. you know it, it does work. It's just you can definitely yeah, tell that it, it loses a little bit when you separate those two ideas. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, I, I'd say I most mean, game developers are guilty of doing that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, and to yeah, be yeah. clear. I played a lot of this game mm -hmm. almost solo, like with sure. with a few intersections with other people, and I liked I liked this game a lot. Yeah, <laughs> with a just PVE. I did own, until I but... hit the walls of having to kill a V boss that I couldn't kill alone, and then I was like, oh, because because we were on such a, a a low populated server of like eight people at most. I was yeah. like, basically, well, no one's playing right now, so I can't do anything, but craft materials that i don't really need to craft mm. but i also kind of am generally not very good at like the fighting end of, of games like this mm. so like whereas you could probably meet most bosses and fight them and advance i would get stuck i mean how many times did i have to have you guys yeah. you know handhold me and then there and then you guys kind of finish the game and i had to get i had to like convince george to come back in and play it all to be able mm. to like do more and it's fun when it's working but like it, there were weeks on end where i was just like i'm logging in just so i can put more essence into my castle get everything farming and then log out because i can't beat mm. anything yeah I, yeah, I guess that's true. And, you know, I, I will say, like, it's, some of those bosses are really challenging. And yeah. I, yeah. I, like, as being the glutton for punishment that I am, I enjoyed that. And I will also bash my face against them over and over that, again. Until that's I reasonable. Kill them. <laughs> I'll usually lose to something three times before I go, yeah, I can't do this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, my From Software conditioning means that I just try forever until I die ah, or the boss. Yeah, the, the weird thing in this game for that mechanic is some of the bosses are quite well designed mm -hmm. but yeah. some of them are a little bit punishing and they can also end up you know obviously depending on where your castle is they can be very far away oh sure and travel and travel so, time is yeah yeah when <laughs> yeah. you die to one and you're like wow i really don't want to cross the map to go do that again and fail and then you have to do that again yeah. and so on you know other the difficult games at least have you know the save point right outside, so you can keep trying it. The yeah. fucking bear, man, the bear killed me. So it's, like that. It's, it's so just far so far. Yeah. Yeah. especially yeah. given, and we should talk about that. The starting castle locations, I I mm. whiffed on that right off the bat because I was in survival mode, right? So it's like right, right. when you start the game, you get out yeah. of the starter area, and it's like okay, you gotta you gotta create something, you know, you gotta be safe. So I found the first place I could, which was. A, a, the extreme bottom left of the entire well, map. Yeah. And I think that you, you kind of have to do that when you're starting because it's like, what, you're new to this game. You don't, like, if you don't know the map, if you don't know how the game works, yeah, yeah. of course you're just going to, like, you have, your advancement is tied to having a castle and upgrading it. You can't get yeah. stronger without it. So, like, right. you have, you kind of have to do that. And yeah. and then later you just, as you learn more, you just, like, yeah. It's, it's, but but even with base. Farbane, well, like Farbane's map, I was still like that yeah. starting mm -hmm. castle yeah. I made was like a, a, it was a long run just to get to like the copper mine. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Well, and that's that's another aspect that we didn't have to deal with. But you know, there's a lot of conversation about like, do you want a castle that's that's near a lot of worthwhile stuff, and you don't have to travel very far for, or do you want something that's out of the way? on a PvP server and people right. won't, right. Yeah, yeah, won't for sure. constantly be attacking you because you're right there yeah. <laughs> where yeah. a lot of people need to go. Yeah, because like, or yeah. maybe they won't be able to find it because like they're never going 
yeah, yeah. Eared off the yeah. Path, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah but but then it's like you have to travel further to get everywhere so yeah that's that's like a calculation that also wasn't a factor in our game so. yeah right but the the challenge level does suffer from the design of travel in the game because oh. i mean you can teleport but with very very few well, items here's the thing too is yeah. like th those are settings that you can choose and i know that probably yeah. the default mode is you can't teleport with you know crafting items and uh, yeah, it, it like, oh i didn't easy. know that was an option but like yeah when uh. you make your when you I, I made a i made like my own solo game just to try a few things out and that's like you can you can change it so you can teleport with everything um i was I, yeah that's like also i was immensely disappointed when i unlocked bat form and mm. had the same restrictions as yes. uh, yeah. as teleporting which that's yeah. also a separate setting yeah um, so it's if you're going for combat you can teleport with your weapons and like some bl extra blood and that's a potions, yeah. potions yeah. 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 yeah and so it's basically you can teleport to something ready for combat but once you've picked up pretty much anything you have to run back yeah, yeah. yep uh and you eventually get like you know your horse like you get a horse and that helps a little bit or wolf form that you know that helps yeah. in the end of the game i'd um, say horse helps until you get to silverlight and then yeah. and every yeah. single guy is an absolute laser beam yeah and you <laughs> off the uh off yeah the horse. off your horse like a yeah. horse you know just, uh, <laughs> i mean that's another thing not to keep harping on this but, like the reason that you can't teleport with a lot of materials and stuff yeah. is definitely to pr to make pvp more of a possibility and like yeah. Yeah. Make yeah. a risk yeah. when For you're sure. coming back with a bunch of yeah. valuable yeah. supplies that you might get ambushed yeah um, exactly it, it really so. is a pvp centric mechanic yeah. that... i think it's balanced for pvp is the yeah. idea yes. yeah. yeah yeah yes but you know to the game's credit too like it's hard to know when you're making a new a fresh server and you've never played the game before but like you can turn you know there's a lot of yeah, customization yeah, yeah. that lets yeah. you change mm -hmm. that experience depending on yep. what kind of game you're playing too sure. Sure. so what kind of like so what kind of weapons builds um spells were people kind of using or enjoying what, what weapon is best and why is it the scythe yes <laughs> yeah I I really actually like the spear, and I know I'm probably in a minority for that, but I, I, I only carry a spear and a scythe for combat now. Yeah, spear's a ridiculous answer. I actually, I actually like... Uh, <laughs> I actually found something to like in most of the weapons. I like mm -hmm. that they're basically like a character class in, in and of themselves once you get weapons yeah. that have all the yeah. abilities on them. Yep. Um, I like the crossbow. I was going to say... I, I never oh. used a crossbow actually. i i thought ranged combat was the only way to go because like i could i never felt comfortable kind of in the melee with a boss just because of their damage output so the, i thought the only way to progress was like i i had like whatever weapon my preference was usually the scythe and then it's like oh it's boss time gotta switch to the crossbow um yeah i that is one of the reasons like i talking about like the scythe like you get to some of these later bosses and it's yeah. so dangerous to be in melee range with them and thus that is a problem i run face rolled yeah. yeah i mean that that is a i've said that before too like that's a yeah. big problem in my game and that's why i do switch over to the side a lot just to drop that like whirlwind attack but yep. like i for for the non v boss fighting running around with a spear is great because if you're trying to like get through a town or something like that and like you know the ads are going to be a problem when you're fighting like a paladin or whatever you can you can use the spear throw to haul in and and then we'll basically one shot like a musket guy and I'm just talking, remove you know remove yeah. him from the yeah. the fight you're, talking, you're also talking like you didn't have chaos volley equipped <laughs> no everyone yeah, yeah that everyone used chaos volley yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> Oh yeah, I felt balance, I felt like chaos balance. volley and the the chaos like teleport dodge, yeah, where they, you get uh, two charges. Both mm. have been nerfed. Ah oh, uh, okay. Because yeah. uh, like when I was playing, like I felt obligated to <clears throat> use both of those because they were both so good. They they oh, wow. it's still really good, but they reduced the damage on chaos volley and they they reduced the damage and actually the dash distance on the chaos. Uh, on the chaos dash so oh, okay. it, 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 uh, yes uh, i agree the best abilities almost i like the i like the illusion dash quite a bit too but mm. I, yeah and like 
even after the nerfs, I still used them constantly. Yep. Because yeah. they're still just generically yeah. useful. Chaos Volley is still two shots, so it's still more damage than the other abilities. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I, did, uh, I did start using, for certain bosses and stuff, I started using the, like, blood shots that you yep. get three charges and they heal you yeah. just for extra healing mostly but uh yeah i'd say the things that i never touched really were the sort of the shielding spells because that, they are mm. like if you screw oh. it up you're dead oh, george george let me tell you about our lord and savior skeleton shield oh yeah that's what God. i was using yeah. if you yeah. time it well it's yeah. Yeah. Skeleton yeah field is just yeah. the freaking bet that was my 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 full loadout was was like the the end game scythe. I still used chaos dash, and then it was either chaos volley or the bloodshot and skeleton shield because skeleton shield is the freaking best. That I do like amazing. the skeleton shield a lot. Yeah, you, know, you block a multi projectile and it just spawns. Yeah, especially like you know did a lot of this, but soloing bosses or even when K Casey and I were duoing the end game bosses, like those skeletons distract and take a lot of hits for you yes yeah. especially if it's like if some of these bosses have like their bullet hell abilities where they throw a bunch of projectiles you can <laughs> catch multiple projectiles on it and it spawns a skeleton for each one yeah and, oh, i was so good. i would I, I didn't try it but i would have loved to see the freak because i had a hard ass time with the spider and so like when the spider just does their freaking bullet hell volley and if i just threw up that oh, skeleton shield i would just imagine it's great you get like yeah 10 skeletons. That's yeah amazing. we're george and i are stuck on the elemental list right now okay that, she kicked our ass a few times and and i yeah. and i had the skeleton shield up but i was i'm was so bad at timing it because i hadn't figured her out yet so i i that was the thing is like i'd throw it up it wouldn't do anything and then i'd just get drilled by like 10 <laughs> shots oh no <laughs> Damn it. so yeah. I, I, yeah we're still working that one out but That's it fair. is it is pretty awesome you can certainly tell that some of the abilities are designed more for the pvp space because they have yeah. things like slows and you know weaken um that oftentimes the B bloods themselves are not susceptible to. So mm. right. having like a an, an AoE blast that slows the enemy and then the B blood just walks through it, they take the damage, but who cares? Like they aren't CC. Yeah, that's true. A lot of the CC stuff is not it's useful for bot fights. Like, it doesn't work in bot which, fights. Yeah. Which yeah, limits your ability to have a different build because you're not going to use some of the abilities at all. Yeah. <clears throat> Definitely, those are more for PvP or for like farming. Yeah. It's so it's so interesting because I I was like I don't know I kind of developed myself into this like tank build where I was using like two different shields and so I would just rotate between the two while I was fighting a boss and so I could, I could most of the time keep up a shield almost entirely uh, throughout like the entire fight and then if I did get hit you know I had like brute blood. And I would just like hit the boss a couple times, and I also use the um, I use the vampiric blood dash, and so like if I did get hit, I would just go invisible, jump behind the boss, hit it once, and get you know a good chunk of health back. Mm -hmm. um, so like yeah, I I did, and then I think the blood shield is also like an interrupt. So if you're dealing with like you know, casters or whatever, you just hit interrupt yeah. them, um, or the Q on the the big uh, whirlwind. A hit is also an interrupt so when you're dealing with you know the light casters and stuff like that you can interrupt that stuff so yeah i did i wanted to be i mean i wanted to be you know the dream of being a, a, a vampire is to be like the summoning you know summon a bunch of monsters get my undead army going like necromancer and uh diablo but yeah like the one the illusion the illusion skeleton just kind of hits him and he and he missed like 50 percent of the time so I yeah that. yeah yeah i hate um, that one yeah it was lame yeah, and then like, even even my ultimate ability was was like the once I got the guardian one. Yeah, um, it's, a, it's more of a shield thing, I think. That's yeah, yeah, that one saved our asses a few times when yeah. George and I were doing because yeah. he would when use you're it. Low on health, you mm -hmm. just throw it. And you get about seven seconds of just continuous shielding while you're standing next to him. Yeah, which is pretty helpful. And it's distracting too for yep. for the boss. So yeah, I, so I would say that basically every weapon except the mace is totally viable i um, agree hmm uh, and i not even awful terrible i mean yeah. i like i think the mace like yeah i if you're killing a mace, golem it's nice but <laughs> yeah, yeah also skeletons yeah like it's it, the blunt damage is really useful sometimes 
Yeah. The weight of the dash attack feels really nice. But uh, uh yeah, it's more of just like it's so hard to target it's with much though. slower because it has high damage. It's super slow. And yeah. the abilities on it are underwhelming compared to the abilities on the other weapons. Yeah, I agree. They're yeah, I mean, I still like the mace. But I could. I, I almost know. thought. I almost thought the mace was more viable for like boss fights because when the boss is just standing there like casting on you, you could like jump behind them and hit them pretty hard and then get a get get away. Um, yeah. Um, I just I just could never land that that jumping attack hammer. yeah properly. I would miss so often where I'd be like, why am I why am I using this? Yeah, and then the, the alternate attack was the knockback that doesn't work on D bloods, so yeah like using it would just get you hit for sure yeah mm -hmm. the spear pull on v bloods is interesting because it sometimes works and sometimes doesn't work uh -huh. so i never know i sometimes i'd throw it out because it still does good damage but then i'd throw it out and then i'd pull them in and be like ah, i didn't want to do that i didn't think they'd get pulled uh, no that's fair interesting i also yeah, overall like yeah. i think the weapons are like yeah like I think some people like more than others, but like all of them are pretty good. I don't know. Yeah. I really like. I think they're the all fun. Too. Yeah, like which is the most important thing. Yeah. yeah, I feel like they're all fun some, to use. Yeah, some are definitely better than others, especially yeah. in like specific circ some circumstances. Well, they have. But like, yeah, they're fun. Yeah, they have but abilities on them, which I I was kind of mad when when like is it the daggers and the sword both have like vegetation extra vegetation yes. damage or something like that? And it was oh, like yeah, it was like. I was like, what the heck? Like, why are these the same? Like, you only have seven weapons in the game. Why Why do they have the same uh, skill on them? And then, yeah, like, I use the spear on the spider because it. I think it's considered a creature. So, yeah, it's like, yeah. I do get the 25% extra damage, which helped me finally take out the spider. Um, yeah. Or, like, undead with the scythe. Like, yeah, I wish. I think, yeah. I, I feel like they kind of painted themselves into a corner design-wise on that because, like, the yeah. fact that certain weapons give bonuses to certain types of enemies, but then it's like, okay, well, vegetation, but also, it's like, what should the should the sword or some, you know, one of these like give bonuses to humans? Because guess what? All of a sudden, that's the only weapon everybody's using. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> like you know. Yeah. Um, I mean, the so... daggers should probably have something like a small percent movement or something. A bleed or something. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Or the more passive bleed, abilities yeah. that are yeah. that are not tied to maybe the type of enemy that you're fighting would be yeah. nice. But I'm also... I'm fine with the targeted to type of enemy. So like, but like it would have been a mistake to to do it for humans though because it's yeah. just yeah. like that's the only thing anyone would carry. So like yeah. having it for beasts and like I think they should what they should have done is they should have probably better defined the mace as being like bludgeoning being really good for rocks and bones you know and, and things yeah. like that and then like yeah. yeah the slashers having the exact same thing as the sword is kind of lazy and the scythe i think right the scythe uh, is, scythe is undead. Undead. No, scythe's undead that's right yeah. i forgot about that there I is feel like... one other mechanic that doesn't really help the weapons in that when you get to the new crafting tier whichever weapon type you have the recipe book for means that that weapon is higher gear score than all of your others so you right. are going to be using it probably exclusively yeah. until you get another weapon of the same tier yeah right. I, so I, I kind of in a weird way i kind of liked that because i felt like it forced me to use like instead yeah. of just using the weapon that yeah. i liked the yeah. most it made me that's why i ended more. up learning the spear at all yeah. is because it was yeah. my jump first around and, and yeah. learn them out yeah that's why yeah. i ended up trying out penguin weapon yeah, yeah that's why i ended up trying out the daggers uh when mm. i hadn't really thought about them before it was like oh i got the i got the next tier daggers before i got anything else i'll try them oh these are rad yeah, yeah. but yeah so there are definitely parts of the game where you have the weapon you like and then you get the next tier of a different weapon, and you're like, well, I guess I need to learn how to use that effectively, which is a good thing. Yeah. But it it, it removes some of your choice at certain times. Yeah. I, I lucked into typically the bow was always like the first the first crafting book I got or whatever. So like that was why like the bow carried me through like the mid game because it was just like usually always the highest thing, and then I could use that to fight bosses. 
I was the exact opposite. I, I think I only ever had the merciless bronze uh, crossbow for like until <laughs> I was uh, until I was well into like making iron weapons and stuff. Same. I didn't get a. I didn't really get high tier crossbows reliably at all. Oh man. I didn't really end up using them very much. Yeah, I actually ended up with the axes, like, <clears throat> like the. I mean, I think I was on merciless iron axe when everything else I had was copper. Oh yeah, what's the axes? It's awesome. No, what's yeah, the George axes? Really um, wood. Wood. Oh, it's wood. It's just like does better damage to trees. Yeah, trees. Oh yeah, my yeah. god! Yeah. But you you get a dash attack on the Q, mm. and then the E you throw them in an arc, and where they meet, it like incapacitates the enemy. Oh, the E cool. is really good. And like so like I just lot. yeah I started to just get really good at like you know throwing them while moving to just stun somebody and keep going and like nice. it was really fun. Uh, but certainly. You know, I, I don't think, like, <clears throat> it was a totally different play style that I was sort of forced into learning, and I liked it. Yeah. Uh, but I used that for a good chunk of that, yeah, mid to late game. So what about blood types? Like, did people have a, like, was there a lot of exploration there? How do we feel about, like, different blood types? My personal opinion on the blood types is... I never really notice the value of them beyond if I have something sub one or, you know, sub 90 versus over 90, I'm always better off. I've never really mm. paid attention yeah. enough. Like I have, I have a 90, I think a 90 plus assassin brute and warrior in a cage and I just mm -hmm. milk their blood. And I just, as long as I have one of those on, I, I feel good enough for combat, but I don't, I, my play style. And again, I have, I admit I'm not very good at games like these because I don't think this stuff through much is I don't really strategize based off of the value of the blood. I just know it's always going to provide a good enough bonus for any V blood fight that I'm going to do. And mm. if I'm not doing a V blood fight, I don't give a fuck what blood I have in me. <laughs> yeah. mm. Agree with yeah, that. It, um, it's, it's, it's a good mechanic um, giving different buffs for different things because the impetus is to actually hunt the world for specific yeah. characters yeah, yeah. of high quality. Yes. But in the the day to day when you're just running around, you just eat whoever is there yeah. to replenish and move on. Because you don't need like I think to John's point, a lot of the bonuses there's what, five different tiers of bonus depending on the percentage. Yeah. A lot of them are irrelevant bonuses for most of your like just land fights. Sure. So, like, like I, I would I would wager that some of the successes I've had, especially when soloing, were directly in line with having the right blood for the right situation. Yeah. But I yeah. never noticed it. Like it was never a strategic choice of mine. And mm -hmm. what I always thought would be cool, because I love the idea of the different types of bloods and the different quality of bloods and everything. I think that's great for this type of game. But it would have been good if it was like more detailed and maybe even simpler in a way where it's like this type of blood, like warrior blood, buffs your, you know, your line of chaos, you know, abilities and gives bonuses to chaos abilities so that you'd want to hunt down warrior blood at high at higher tiers if you're going to use chaos volley and the chaos dash and that stuff. And, like, mm. making you really have to customize what kind of blood you wanted to do based off of the loadout you wanted to use or even affect your weapons, you know? Like, yeah. you know, yeah, it's great, I mean, you know, having warrior blood or brute I, blood in, and using the mace would be awesome, you know? Yeah, and having it I mean, matter. I think there's an element of that and I kind of don't want it to be more granular unless it becomes a lot easier to find high yeah. percent. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Like, yeah, they're a little too rare. I, to yeah. be, like, I was going to say, like, I I was able to get... I only found two, like, 100% folks <laughs> that I was able them. to actually, like, imprison. You know, I, yeah. and that was with a, a couple of accidental deaths of other ones because it's very yep. easy for them to die. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. And so, you know, I... Unfortunately, yeah, I didn't. I don't feel like I got to experience some blood types at higher percentages, and you know, it's especially a big deal to get them at a hundred percent because everything gets like thirty percent stronger when you get that last percentage <laughs> yeah. point. Um, but that said, like I, I had a hundred percent brute and then a hundred percent worker, and they were awesome. Mm. Um, yeah, but uh. Yeah, I just, uh, you know, 
I, I like the sort of uh, po- almost Pokemon-y aspect of like having to go out <laughs> and find. Yeah, but it also absolutely. reminds me of something that I hate about Pokemon, which is like it's exciting to find the type you want. It's a bummer when you're grinding for high the highest like inherent values. Yeah, like yeah. Yeah. Cat scores in them. Yeah, yeah. When yeah. the yeah. game the best starts IV to become or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're just looking for the highest percent, and you don't find them, and then you're just running around wasting your time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and you know, it's like it's more, it's it's more common than like, that, less frustrating than that. There, uh, there should be no reason that they couldn't just make all the low tier, like any V blood that you fight should give you a hundred percent blood ooh, when you drink it any time after you've beaten them. That would be amazing. Yeah. I wish V blood did something for your. Blood. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, hundred percent. But it's agree. like you can't, yeah. you know, you can't imprison them and milk them, but you could always just go fight, you know, Vincent the Frostbringer, who's just wandering around where all of our castles are. If you're willing to, you know, deal with his fight when you're over leveled for him, just to know that you're going to drink him and get a hundred percent fighter blood for the next thing you're going to go do. Yeah. That would be great. That'd be yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted them to do anything. Because, yeah, like, going back to my first base and, like, every once in a while you just run into, like, the Alpha Wolf or freaking Lydia and it's like, I kill them and it's like, oh, maybe I get a special yeah, heart. Nothing. Yeah, I get a heart or something. And it's Absolutely like, okay, cool. nothing. Yeah. I know. Yeah, I, I, felt I assume like... that will get changed. Like, yeah. I feel like that's a yeah. that's a that's a thing they'll definitely address at some point. Um, killing it doesn't even replenish your just your blood. I know. I know. Yeah. Even so if it just good. like refilled whatever blood you had. Yeah, yeah. that's maddening. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you get you beat a boss and get nothing if you've beaten yeah. them before. Yeah, that would be great too. It just I mean, I, I like mine better, but like yeah, if it just, just replenished whatever blood you had on you without yeah. changing the type would be good even, enough. Even just that would be fine. Yeah. Like just something. So like but, just refill my blood pool if nothing else. Something yeah. instead of nothing would be nice. Yeah. I would also just love a reason, like, to for to kill bosses more than once. Yeah. 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 Um. yeah. I used I I like I said I went this weird like vampire vampire tank build, so it was always brute. Also, brute felt really strong because it gave you an extra like item or gear score point. Yeah. So like yeah. sometimes that really came in handy. It's like oh, I'm fighting. You know, level seventy boss or whatever, and I'm seventy one now or seventy two, and it's like, okay, that, like that. I think those extra points like make a huge difference. They do. Like, damage they output, absolutely so. do. They're, yeah. They're everything. Yeah. Yeah. So like the fact that the brute blood gave you know one extra point was like, okay, this is huge. Um, yeah. There besides was one... the vampiric ability. Yeah. I ended up with John. I I I drank some random guy. Like I don't know if it was a brute or I think we might have done a creature. Oh sure. And yeah, we, I think hit, it was. We, we, we hit a blood moon, and the, it was a hundred percent creature with a blood moon on it. And I think I ended up with like thirty or thirty-five percent damage reduction. Oh wow! And so it's like, yeah. oh, I'm invincible in this fight. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, was that was that when we fought the elementalist and then died anyway? Uh, I, no, I think it was. <laughs> we one definitely of the ones that we, we definitely did. died. I remember wasting it. Yeah. But it was just, you know, th- that type of thing. It was just like, uh, oh, yeah. wow, this is really powerful. Yeah. And, like, I've never yeah. seen this before because, you know, it's like... Oh, actually, that might yeah, that might have been up in the Cursed Forest when we yeah. went to fight that guy who we thought was going to kick our ass and then we just <laughs> fucking mulched. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then we ran and immediately killed the, the, the spider, frog. I think, afterwards. Yeah. Or frog was the frog. Yeah, the frog. Um, yeah, destroyed him. I think the yeah. community has kind of rallied around scholar blood being the best probably yeah. because chaos yeah. is so strong but yeah. Was, yeah yeah in the same thing that uh that nerfed chaos folly i think they actually reduced the yes. the life steal you get from scholar blood yeah. mm-hmm. um as well because yeah that was the whole thing is like get 100 percent scholar blood chaos volley like fully heals you every time you hit something with it <laughs> uh, yeah I remember yeah. I remember one of the fights where I, I forget what the V blood was. It's someone in um uh is it it's either Farbane or Dunley. I can't remember, but you uh it was it was me, Casey, and Kev all doing it. And there was I think actually George, I think George was there too. It was mm-hmm. earlier on, and there was a hundred percent none scholar 
Oh, in wow. in mixed in with the fight, and I started drinking her because I, I didn't even mean to. I just hit like the drink button, and I remember Kev's like, "Oh, 100 percent, I gotta bring her in." I was like, "Oh shit, I'll cancel that," and I just killed her. I didn't, her. Even, <laughs> didn't even drink her. Yeah. It was so I, heartbreaking. I accidentally killed a lot of, not yeah. a lot, but a, but a fair amount of 100 percent. The, the fact that they still take damage from the fucking fire from the archers and yes, those archers are the worst thing in the game. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So hard to deal with. Yeah, it's just this random, just like regular just like... level rogue troop who <laughs> fires a fireball, basically. It's and they ridiculous. do more damage and themselves very... and their friends than they do yeah, you. Yeah, they don't. Usually. They don't give a fuck if they burn their friends along with you. For my Which, horse, you know, <laughs> is very fast on it. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's very the, accurate with the, the frequency with which it can happen. When if you end yeah. up with like two of them in a fight, you just everywhere you go, you're just getting hit. Yeah, the world huge is on fireball fire. explosion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that could be toned down a little bit. I think. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I would tell it was. An, I mean, I, I hate it when it kills my hundred percent blood that I'm trying to get back to my freaking castle yeah. but yes but at points it's just, i'm just like what the hell yeah yeah this entire city is on fire because two archers are just running around yeah. shooting me like, or or the gun you maniac yeah two archers and then throw in a freaking bomber guy and like now literally yeah Everything's you can't on fire and exploding yeah. yeah um cool well i did like the uh moving on to like the base building slash like crafting i i really felt that was fun and compelling just kind of like go out get some stuff and i disagree mm. okay. <laughs> i think I, yeah. I don't know i think it's so it's so like straightforward that like you you don't have a lot of creativity there's mm. not a lot of room for like yes for doing like clever layouts or whatever it's just like build a box put this stuff in it Yep. So you can keep getting more powers. Hmm. And I think yeah, there's yeah. a little bit of yeah, once you get certain floors you can specialize your rooms, but then it mm -hmm. is just a series of boxes to Right, fit yeah. And I've got I got like special rooms going and everything, but yeah, it's yeah. still just, just like a series of boxes. I just I There know. there are quite a lot of like nice cosmetic items they put in when you get them on the research tables. You know, different candles and yeah and, and, and i feel like things, the cosmetics but... like i don't understand it because like on the one hand like if you're in a pvp setting or in a pve setting sorry like we played yep. you know i still maybe visited everyone's castle like yeah once twice <laughs> yeah. yeah like you know what i mean yeah. like so who, yeah. who like you're you're putting up these decorations just for yourself which is fine. wasting materials yeah, to yeah. Do it. yeah. Like, materials yeah. Of decorations just for yourself and then in a pvp setting why would you ever spend time Yes, you would. You would I, have a, I have a cynical answer for this. It's uh, you want all of these so that the people that go really hard on them will post walkthroughs of their insane castles on Reddit. Mm. And people <laughs> about how sure. Yeah, but like, but like the thing uh, is, so I personally feel like in in our, I mean, all the maps are the same, but like in our game world, I have the physical best place to build mm. a castle like that long plateau up top that's like halfway between cursed and silver light mm. and like it's let me really expand out and i and i enjoy it other than the fact that running back and forth within my castle is <laughs> tiring <laughs> to say the least because but but it let me build a real castle not just like you know because like really all you need to do is build the minimum amount of space for all of your crafting items to go into yeah. but like yeah. one one thing i haven't done at pretty much at all is decorate my castle in any way shape or form mm. because i just like it hasn't you know i should have because there were some nights where no one else was on and i couldn't beat a v blood and i was mm. just bored so i should have been doing that but i just mm. never wanted to bother because it's like oh i need glass to put windows up and i actually need a shitload of glass to make yeah, scourge stones right now so i'm not going to waste glass on windows like yeah <laughs> Don't go um, to my castle then. Yeah, I know, I know. I've, I, I, I saw that both of your castles had all this glass, and I was like, "Fuck oh, you!" Oh no, I mean, my class, my <laughs> castle is carpeted, and I have an yeah. entire room that is just like, yeah. you know, furniture. 
no I just, purpose, but... I just <laughs> can't bring myself to do that. Whereas in Valheim, yeah. and again, part of the reason I think that is, is because in this game, it's so easy to just assemble your castle. Whereas Valheim, it was always like when, when George and I were playing with Troy and like we had our server going, it was like George loved building and I sucked at it. So I would go adventure and bring materials back and George would make these awesome buildings. But like you, when you're doing that and it's harder, you want to build out this nice stuff. But like when it's put down floor tiles, automatically snap in walls, don't have to worry about a second floor or a roof. Yep. I don't really feel any value or ownership in the castle I built <laughs> other than its functionality. So I'm kind of more on um, Lucid's side, Steve, Steve, si Steven's okay. side of it. Patrick. Sorry, I forgot your name for a minute. Steven's side Patrick. of it there oh, for the I, building. Oh, you, Patrick, you God damn it. Yeah, uh, Steven <laughs> playing that one time. Okay, fair enough. Patrick, sorry. Uh, I'm more on Patrick's side for the building, but I, I do agree with Casey on the crafting system, which I really like. It is very straightforward, but I actually really like all of the interplay between all of the things. Once you're at like full capacity, like especially in the grind to build dark, uh, dark silver. Cause it's like, you know, I have my operation to build all of to make the dark silver. I have my, my scourge stone manufacturing and then you, know, you get enough to make your thing and you make that. And it's like, I really enjoy that part of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, it's the lack of creativity in builds that is well, yeah. the drawback. It's not really designed yeah. for that. Yeah it's, not, yeah, it's not meant for that. And it's, I, really meant be, that. it's meant I will to be more PvP'd. One thing that helps yes. me with that a little bit is I think the camera angle works against maybe <laughs> making your castle Absolutely. look nice because it's really yeah. hard to see how yeah. it looks. I, I downloaded a, a mod that unlocks the camera and lets you like zoom. You can zoom all the way into first person, and then still walk around if you want to. Oh wow! Um, so much better. And, yeah. And, yeah, that was I, game changing for me when you put that into the Discord. It's so. I just like I. They should add that as an option because like, I I enjoyed it and I felt. I, I also I didn't realize how good parts of the game looked. Yeah. So I did that, including like it made me like I was in my castle and was like, oh, I can actually see like. How nice the lighting looks when I put yep. these candelabras up. I'm gonna put more of these up. Like, it was you know, absolutely it was... crazy to me when when I put it in because I was like, oh, this is gonna be a disaster. <laughs> like, there's no way this because George and I had had a conversation about that all, like early on in the game where I was like, this camera is really limiting and annoying. I can't get low enough to see far enough forward when I'm running, and it's and 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 we kind of came to the like the the opinion of well, it's probably a like a build like they have to have it like that you know like they had to build it that way for how their system works but it's very obvious to me that this mod is such a simple unlock to where the camera can go you know because it's so flawless it, it's <laughs> made me it's made me convinced that uh the the camera angle is also a pvp decision they don't want people yeah. to be able to see people from each other from too far away Yep. Mm -hmm. You can't yeah. amb ambush people. And, and they yeah. want people to have the same sight lines on when they can see each other. Yeah, uh, that makes that makes sense. Which is why you can't play with these mods on any official servers. But right, right, um, right. but it sure is nice for just like doing your own thing. And it make it made me really appreciate like the game looks good. The art direction is really nice. The lighting does is good. really yeah. well done. Yeah. And it's like yeah, I it can't is. appreciate that when I'm locked up in the sky from you know the like, detail yeah, too really all the details yeah. that you just can't see it's yeah. really nice yeah uh, I, I think the single most impressive technical aspect of the game that i find is how accurate the day or the light shadow is yeah oh yeah. yes the, the shadows move as the day progresses and you can in real time watch the shadow on the ground sliding and if you step like right off the shadow into the light, you will immediately start to burn. Yeah. And it doesn't matter where the shadow has shifted. It is real time. You can just keep checking it and it is extremely accurate. Yeah, it's so good. And I, I like... think it was important that they got that right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. But, I mean, it's it a is... big part of a game, but like, yeah, yeah it, it is, it very is like impressive. really good. Yeah, yeah I've, I've hidden behind lampposts before and it's like, yeah. oh wow, I can't believe this is working. Or like, oh, a, you know, like... it's got like a sign on it or something. I'm hiding in the sign shadow. Like, yeah, it's yep. yeah. like, edging my way around a lamp post to try and follow the shadow as it moves yeah 
Yeah, and, and not only is it accurate, but it's predictable. Like you can tell yeah. where the sun's going, so you can like, so you know, like, okay, if I'm like, that's again, this is a, a thing I like with the spear, especially in Brighthaven, is if I'm like hunting people down, I can stand in an alley, pull, pull them in, and fight them in the alley, and then I can see when the shadows are moving. It's like, okay, I can advance to the next section now and mm. clear all those guards, and then have that area too. Yep. Yeah. It's a really good piece of tech because it's core to the game play, but it's also, I mean, it works. Well executed, yeah. 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 Um, also part of base building was making like the the coffins again with trying to hunt down high, higher percentage um, enemies. But uh, I I liked, again, I liked the, um, I liked the, the like kind of, Again, Pokemon aspect of it of going out and catching yeah. like a really high level Pokemon, so I could throw them in a coffin and then um, maybe a little bit uh, cynical on like it's just an excuse to log in once a day to kind of send out my minions to go farm for me, but it, yeah. it got me materials that I needed to progress. So um, it's very generous with the amount of materials it gives it you, is. Too, especially if you're matching them to like the type that they're good at harvesting from. Yeah, so I I liked it because it saved me farming time. Um, yeah. <laughs> I made the mistake. Of, yeah, I made the mistake of of ignoring that system until until I was like until after Octavian probably. Mm. So like all of my copper that I had to mine er, in early game I did myself. I never bothered with servants until well after I was like okay, mm -hmm. it's time to start going into the the cursed forest, but I still need glass and things like that and cotton. So yeah. I'm going to start having servants do it. And I was like, fuck, why didn't I do that? Like, that was such a setback. Other than the fact yeah. that, like, I didn't play on your guys' schedule for a lot yeah. of the game. Like, that was such a setback for me keeping pace I mean, with that's people. That's basically how I used it, too, is, like, once I was done with the area, I would start having yeah keep the keep the stuff coming in that i still need but it. yeah it's very rewarding for the time you put in to set it up for yeah. what it gives you and how it lets you do like grind out all those things and and honestly like had i been doing that i might have taken more interest in the castle decorations and customizing but like every time i wanted to make an iron you know or a bronze fence post you know i had to go mine that did that mm. that bronze myself and it was just yeah. like ugh. It was annoying. <laughs> you do run a little bit into the storage solution problem of like, where am I going to put all this crap that I've either yeah. picked up while running around the world or, you know, or yeah. that they're just bringing back um, buckets full of BS. Yeah. I mean, I will say like some of the highest tier storage things have a lot of room in them, which yeah. is nice. Yeah. Uh, this game desperately needs a way to craft from storage. Uh, yes. 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 Because having to like pull out the specific materials I'm trying to craft with was yep. maddening. And that honestly, was one of the best features in Eco, I felt. That's probably one of the main reasons that I didn't do a lot of like extra base building beyond the, the basics and like playing with the lighting lights and stuff a bit because it was just so annoying having to like figure out how much I needed to be carrying on me and making the stuff and like knowing I had everything but like, oh which which specific chest did I put that in? Oh, did yeah. I just dump that in the one by the door when I came in because I was too lazy to sort it correctly? Yeah. Um, mm. you yeah. Know, um, um, one thing that they should definitely consider that we we had an eco is the the bonuses you get from cosmetics having an impact. Oh, so in yeah. eco, it was you know part of your experience gain in that game was from eating the right foods but then part of it was the quality of your base honestly i think yeah. that's one of the more interesting things that eco does that yeah. i haven't really seen done in a lot of survival games is yeah. is really because in, in v rising right if you have the right floor for the table type so if you have a workshop yeah. floor with your workshop tables yeah they get a uh, like a efficiency effic efficiency yeah, yeah. It, like, if it's enclosed, you get a speed increase, and then if it's the right room, you get like less materials to build stuff. Yeah. Right. If they tied the cosmetics into that system somehow, so that, like if you build the candelabras and the carpets and the drapes and just like really build out your base, it should become more efficient in some way, or yeah, give or, you a reason yeah. to do it other than it just looks cool. 
Yeah. That would be nice, yeah. Because yeah. that would also incentivize you to do that stuff on a PvP server if you can continue the efficiencies or increase the speed at which you can craft. Like, give it a reason. Because yeah. right now there just yeah. there isn't a reason to, like you said, spend the resources to do all of the decorating. Yeah. Because there are some really cool decorations. It's just... Yeah. Uh, and, you know, who knows? I still... This game is a very impressive first release early access title for yeah. sure i'm very yeah. interested to see where they go with it as yeah. the i hope they keep iterating on some of the core systems like that yeah i will say i am getting sick of this world of early access games where i'm like i'll play it up at its limitations and really enjoy it and be like cool i don't want to play this game again this is where i'm at with valheim where i really want to play more valheim but i absolutely don't want to spend any more time in valheim until it's like a full release oh, yeah. so you know it's like that already. Yep. <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's tough yeah. it's annoying at some points yeah i mean yeah it's yeah it's like this game you know i i, I still want to you know with george like go through and finish the rest of the v bosses and kind of quote unquote beat the game but then i wouldn't want to play it again until something more had One changed out, whether yeah. they added a new zone or something sure. and even then i would probably want to try it even though i don't think i'd enjoy or excel at the pvp side i'd want to try some sort of public server that sure. had more population sure. to mean, it for for a next go i mean that it that exact thing isn't that different from like a full release game though except you, yeah you, you know you're getting more from this game yeah so it's in yeah. a very good state for early access yeah. but yep. you can tell that there's like I mean, there's the whole i think the mountain landscape has yeah. nothing in it it's yeah. just yeah. got like the two v bloods and there's yeah. nothing else yeah. there i think they the have raid a stage could does. be interesting yeah yeah i mean it's, and then it's a first like it's yeah. been out for like two months in early access. It's exactly. It's got an incredible amount of content for what yes. you usually sure. see. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, I think the the roadmap said that I think that mountain area is the next thing coming out, and they're gonna add sure. a big castle to the middle of Dunley, and yeah, it'll be like a big raid that'll be really interesting. I don't know. There's oh, that's that's yeah, that's that weird rocky area that you yeah, yeah you're right in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That'll yeah, be I mean, fun it, to go back it, into. It, it is a lot of content yeah. for. You know what it is i'd say i don't know i probably it's... played 50 hours of the game um i think it's the most polished early access game i've ever played sure. me too mm -hmm. by, yeah, yeah. By a pretty wide margin yeah, yeah. Like, you certainly don't run into like bugs and stuff very often. i mean, I, I didn't i didn't smooth. encounter like a single like yeah. i didn't have any crashes or any like game breaking mm. bugs no everything ran great yeah um, yeah uh, there is a, uh, a a server reset that I think is a, a separate issue, but every night at like eleven twenty, I think the server just turns itself <laughs> off for two seconds. Well, that's yeah. That's yeah. Just yeah. on the server side. Of yeah, it. I, yeah. I think yeah. And, like, there's I think a lot the, of servers do that. Yeah. I think the only major bug I've run into that was repeatable was when Kevin and I were fighting Octavian. He just stopped fighting for like the last quarter of his health. And gave us uh, a free win. Yeah, and then it happened, happened again Casey. when I fought him with George. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that happened to okay. Casey and I on one of the end game bosses, actually, too. We were fighting <laughs> yeah. the Behemoth, and he just decided to stop Behemoth. Yeah, and, and you're like, like oh, uh, I'll take it, but also this feels a little cheap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was, but you know, I will also say that is a bug that has pretty minimal player friction. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. You know, it's. <laughs> No, well, that's win. like the nice. only issue I've run into. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's one place near my castle that every time I break, uh, I break a, it's like a bed or a chest or something. When I yeah. break it, it drops a thing that can't be picked up. But that's sure. who cares, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I do wonder in the roadmap though, what, you know, if they have anything in mind for sort of a quote end game. Yeah. They said they're going to uh, release basically like a raid encounter raids. style thing that's yeah. designed for multiple players. That's what yeah. the 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 big like ruin thing in the middle of a uh, of Dunley is a... Dracula's castle or something. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's supposed to be Dracula's castle, I guess, and it's going to be like a big raid encounter that's meant to be gone through by multiple players. Oh, cool. Yeah. That would yeah. be fun to go back and revisit on our current server, assuming it. I don't know how that works because it's. Is it a paid server that we're on right now, or? Um. 
yeah, I am renting that yeah. server. So yeah, so that I'm that's gonna shut issue. it down as soon as you guys are. Right. Yeah. Done. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I'm gonna. I'm. I've played so much of this game. I lately, I, I'm kind of planning to a similar thing to to Valheim, probably, unless there's like something really big that looks like it. So that's amazing. Yeah, it's yeah. gonna change yeah. how I play the game. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna wait till there's a full release. One point nine. It, it is and, uh, unless you're playing PvP. I'm not sure like what would compel you to continue to come back to the game because right now, like well, you know, it's a it's a content treadmill. So when they release new V Bloods, yeah. it's I mean, fun to go fight them. Yeah, it's really. I mean, the game is designed in a way that's going to be yeah. really modular, and you know, yeah. but um, but yeah, you know, I and I mean, you know. Depending on what, like when they add the big mountain area, if they add like a whole new research tier and a yep. new weapon type or two, and like, you know, yep. there's a bunch of new V bloods, like, I don't know, maybe, you know, that sounds almost compelling enough to get me to come back. But I think I'd rather just, I'd rather bank up a bunch of content and, yeah, and, and then come back. PvP with... it. Uh... it. In the future <laughs> on these things, I, I, act, I do, I have my own server in my basement, so I can't always host. I mean, assuming they have a docker for it. Let me see if they do or not. Mm. But, uh, yeah, so, like, I know Eco and, like, Valheim, we ran off of my server rather than paying for one. It All worked right. fine. Uh, oh, cool. Um, worked really well for Valheim. Let me see if they have V Rising. They might. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, looks I like think if do. I came back yeah, to this game, like... As of right now, I don't think I will come back to this game. Fair. Um, and if I did, I think I would. Ha it would have to be PvP because I'd have to see like what the mm. intended, yeah, yeah, play mm -hmm. style is of this game. Yeah. It sounds chaotic and hard, and like I wouldn't be very good at it, and probably lose interest <laughs> pretty fast. But yeah, uh, yeah, I, I think that'd be the only way I would come back to this. I, this I think point. yeah, if you are a player looking for a long-term game you would have to do pvp so that you actually have the push and pull of collecting and having your stuff destroyed right. and then rebuilding it and pushing other people's and that that tension doesn't exist in pve so once you've yeah. played through the content you're just like cool that was fun oh, yeah. done an interesting yeah. issue that i'm that i'm hearing in a lot of the discourse around the way that pvp servers are working right now mm. is like Yep. There's kind of an issue with server longevity. It tends to like, sure, people, you know, a server will launch and people will be pretty active and trying to rush technologies and get ahead and and stuff. And then, okay, um, okay. yeah, and then you know, people will lose interest or or move to other servers. It's sort of like they're most exciting when people are still grouped together at the beginning, and then yeah. Yeah. servers turn into ghost towns and. As more well, players leave, they get bored, and and eventually well, servers certainly the down. power differential would become a problem, right? Yeah, whichever well, it's like... PvP team is ahead could crush the people that are trying to catch up. Yeah, and I think and then those people just leave and go to a new server where they're not yep. getting oppressed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's then, a very difficult game to keep balanced over and time the, because and then the people that are running the servers get bored because there's nobody for them to bully around anymore, so they leave and start fresh. And, yeah, and then the server dies. <sighs> yeah, I mean, how how long would it take you to get through like the first full tier of gear into the next tier? Yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah. if if you can only play at night or something, and then you got people playing all day, they're going to be yeah. light years ahead of you, and you can't play. Yeah. That yeah. being said, for how much the game cost us in early access and what oh, we yeah. got out of the PvP or the PVE side of it, yeah, doing that for a week and having it and having us either all get wiped and fail and quit or dominate and then <laughs> have no one to fight, yeah. that's worth it. Like that that's a worthwhile gaming experience for me. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. just yeah. not a you know, it's not like I'd never treat it like an MMO where I'm coming back just, to it every right. day for a year, you know. Yeah. Well, sure. I just uh I also think that it's I think that's one of the things that was really interesting about the three endgame bosses that Casey and I experienced was uh, they dropped these like power stone things when mm -hmm. you kill them. And the design intent behind these is really interesting because it's basically like anybody in your team can touch them and get like a pretty significant buff. But they can be, you know, and I, the intent seems to be that they're almost like a king of the hill mechanic. That okay. once once a once a team has killed these bosses, they take these power stones and like 
you you get them and like you can't mount or transform and you have to slowly walk back to your castle and place it in your castle so you're meant and you have a big icon over you on the world uh, map the yeah. whole time you're doing it and then once you place it you can interact with it and get a buff and uh and then people can break into your base and steal them apparently mm -hmm. so right. it's meant to be sort of like a tug of war but from what i can see the way that the ecosystem is designed like servers aren't aren't getting even close to the point where people are getting these things and yeah. like fighting over right. them because you'd have so to I, like have people online at the same time to actually come conflict yeah. yeah well and you know like there's there's solutions to that like some some servers only have pvp turned on for like two hours every night and stuff. yeah which is really um, smart to have, yeah, yeah that 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 is a huge boon to yeah. having a big active server and not just having it be miserable 80 percent of the time yeah, yeah. But i just i see some of these design intents and i'm very interested to see if like you know that the developers are are looking closely at, at like for instance server longevity and stuff and how you know which people, how many people are interacting with some of these intended mechanics? Yeah, and I, I think it's going to be really interesting to see if they, if they try to design and, ref, and you know, change that experience a bit and see how it works. But sure. uh, I don't know. It's very interesting. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of good ideas in this game, and I am interested yeah. to see if they will keep iterating on them to, to make those ideas implement better. Yeah. Well, did um, did we have any favorite bosses, least favorite bosses throughout our experience? I mean, I had a bad experience with the bear, but I think that was just because I was under leveled and trying to solo it. So, <laughs> bear's kind of a jerk when you're solo and still yeah. like early enough in the game that you're not like super good yeah. at the game yet. Yeah, he just rushes uh, you and murders you. Yeah. yeah, I guess I would say I didn't like the bosses that. I was just one and done with. In this yeah. type of game, if I fight a boss and smash him on the first go, it's not a good boss. Because mm -hmm. uh, it's just, you know, like, n if you don't know their mechanics and can immediately figure out how to not die, you're either, like, overleveled for it or it's just not that difficult to fight. Because mm -hmm. there yeah, were some like really that. cool boss fights that were maddening because I kept losing, but I was like, wow, this is tough and like it's challenging and yeah. it's interesting. Like that that uh Yeti guy who'd like yeah. put you into a blizzard and like it was crazy. Yeah. Um Yeah. Solaris the Immaculate has fucking three phases. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We did I mean, we, bastard. we smashed our head against him for like three hours one night to no avail and then the next we came like, back and one shot at him and then we yeah, came back and one shot because we freaking slept on the mechanics and like now yeah new but there, there are certainly some memory, fights that yeah. like i don't even remember some of this the random like human oh, like sure. i don't know human yeah. brute guy it's like okay you were a joke and i yeah. smashed you and i don't even remember who you are i think um, the most fun group fight i had was me and george fighting um the vampire hunter in farbane because like we struggled oh, with him a ton and yeah. then we finally got one where I died towards the end mm -hmm. and George and the sun came up and George was just yeah. like frantically trying to finally like to finish him off. And yeah, he I finally mean... did like, that was an awesome fight. It was, And yeah. then, and then my favorite solo fight was Jade uh, because that was one of the ones where I, I engaged her being like, I'm, I mean, I'm definitely going to die. I can't beat anyone. <laughs> and I like, lasted long enough in that fight to see what her mechanic was in the fight and like use it to my advantage i think i died once against her and then i beat her the second time but it was like it was such a relief because that was when i was kind of languishing and i was like i can't i can't advance this game at all like i'll never beat octavian alone so what do i do and i was like well fuck it i'll just go die to jade i've never actually fought her and I fought her. I was like, "Oh, I think I can beat her." And then I went back and did. And I was like, "Ah, oh, that was really rewarding." Yeah. Uh, talking about punishing like lead ups to bosses, I think, and and just my struggle with uh, trying to get like better gear was that spider was just yeah, yeah, yeah. like yeah. just you have to you have to crawl through that huge tunnel. And, yep. You know, you probably yep. have one, maybe two fights, two attempts before the tunnel fills back up with spiders. <sighs> Which mm -hmm. becomes a pain in the ass because all of your gear and all your good, all your good potions and all your good blood is like on your corpse. So now yep. you have to like go run through the entire cave or like fight your way through the cave, and uh, yeah. So that that was probably one of my biggest 
so I I did that one with John, and yeah. I, you could plainly see how much better it was with friends. Yes. Because we went through the cave and fought the boss, which is a really actually well designed fight. Yeah, yeah that was a good. We just, we just one shot it and left, and it was just like that was easy. Well, so so but... there's two things about that though. One, I had fought her solo before and failed, but I almost yeah. beat her on my own. And I, while you were under leveled for her, I was very yes. over. I was as yes. because because I couldn't beat her solo. I had to grind all my ghost yarn out of that one undead village. Yeah, so I did, I did level past her. You yeah, know? I think you were a good, like, eight gear <laughs> yeah. levels higher than me, at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it was definitely, like, playing it was that a good fight, fight yeah. with someone else made the cave run easier. And yeah. just everything yeah. about it was yeah. just like, oh, this is, like, really palatable. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that whole night was, a, like, a fun set of, like, oh, yeah. getting all of the Cursed Force. Because then, like, the guy, the guy who we one-shotted in, like, in the far east part of Cursed uh, Forest. Yeah, the, uh, the undead Wild guy. Rock. Yeah, he he was like, we fought him, and it was like, oh my god, this is chaos. We're definitely fucked. And then we ended up beating him. Yep. But it was like, it was a good fight. But also, we were like, was he hard though? Like he didn't. Maybe he wasn't hard, but maybe I'm just over leveled. And like, yes. But like, I I thought the yeah, I really did enjoy that night in general. But the spider fight was probably the highlight of it. Yep. Mm. No, there's some very cool mechanics on some bosses. Usually the ones that have some sort of sort of AOE mechanics, some of these yeah. extra ads, like, you know, I think the, the Yeti fight was crazy, the spider fight's pretty crazy. Um there's the is it the the light priest uh, Raziel or No, the, it's an earlier the one, one in Dunley? Uh, yeah, I think so. Because yeah. like she's yeah. just like throw in heal areas and like does oh, it, yeah, it's yeah. it's challenging for sure. Yeah. Uh which it know, was some fun. of the other fights are just a total bunch of pushovers. They just like charge at you and you move and shoot oh, from range and it's simple. I could also see the, was... some of the holy bosses, like the fact that you need to throw on the holy resist. I'm glad that those persist yeah. through persist through death. death. Um, yeah, because if they didn't, that would be so punishing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was funny. I went and fought Raziel solo again, doing that thing where I'm like, well, I have nothing to do and no one's on and I yeah. can't beat anyone. Well, I might as well try. So I did the, oh, it's a blood moon. I'm going to put on my best blood, put all my buffs on and go fight Raziel. And I went in and fought him and one shot at him. And I was like, yeah. oh, man, he's easy. I, 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 I destroyed him. And then I went back in with George to do the fight and we got our asses kicked mm -hmm. like three times in a row. Yeah, it's a fucking train wreck every time. It was so weird. Well, yeah. I do think there's some sort of a scaling. I don't know what there it might is, be. Yeah, yeah. They definitely I do. have. I think more health, and when yes. they have, when they summon, summon ads, correct. They summon more ads. Because when I soloed, ads. yeah, when I solo or when I did the the guy at the bastion, it was like, oh, he summons one archer halfway through, and it's like, okay, I can go focus on the archer and get my, you know, because I'm brute blood vampiric. Like I would just use those guys to like heal back up um uh but like i think when me and john tried it like he summoned two archers and now we're all running around like ah there's ads everywhere so yeah i mean i think it's a testament to the game that there are these many experiences that everybody launches into stories about yeah 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 killing a v blood is rewarding sometimes sometimes it's just like oh that was stupid like i was over leveled or that was easy kind of like what george said but like sometimes it was like oh fuck yeah i can't i'm so happy i got that because i a it unlocks the next tier of the game for me yeah. but also i feel like i earned that like sometimes you do feel like you earned the win yeah or you're waiting for conditions to be perfect so that you you know yeah. You, you wait for the blood moon you wait for it like all of a sudden because you know a day at like half a day ahead of time you're like oh shit yep. it's a blood moon i gotta go fight a boss because this yep. is about the only chance i have so um well cool uh any other topics broad strokes anybody wants to talk about before we talk about i think we've kind of covered off and like what we'd like to see in the game going forward but if anybody wants to encapsulate that they could or any other topics we want to talk about before we get to kind of our final thoughts of it of it all. Uh, if not, let's uh, um, we can start. I'll I'll throw one out for you. Cool. Fishing. Oh <laughs> yeah, my god. Yes. So uh, 
Um, it's just an incomplete system for sure. It's 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 a system they saw other games have fishing as a mechanic, and said, "Oh, we could do that." <clears throat> but the fishing loot table seems to be anything in the game can be fished. And so when you're looking for actual fish and you pull up, you know, iron bars and just random yeah. stuff, it was just like, this is maddening because I need some fish. Yeah. It's fish really stupid. Important. I figured out, like, the better way to get fish was just to go to the docks. In yeah, yeah for sure. And yeah, for smash, sure. like, because all the crates there drop yeah. fish. And yeah. it was way better than fishing because yeah. fishing yeah. could give you yeah. fucking any garbage. But Having when servants you're do it for you game. is even better. Yeah, yeah it's just yeah. it's a survival game, so you've got to have different gathering like yeah. it's not it's sort of fishing, and it was just not that. <laughs> no. Yeah. So I'll just throw that one out there as a final like. No, you're that's good. a terrible system. Yes. yes. It's yeah. just incomplete. Work in progress. In my opinion. Yeah. 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 Well, cool. You want to run through our final thoughts, starting with uh, Kim? Uh, sure, yeah. I think it's been touched on a lot, but uh, this is probably the most complete and well-realized early access game, especially this early in its early apps, uh, access life cycle that I've ever encountered. Um, it has a lot going for it. I find the combat really fun. I find the the survival mechanics fairly light in a way that they that they kind of get out of the way. So if you're if you're here for that, maybe this isn't quite what you're looking for. But it's kind of a it's a fun vampire fantasy, and uh, I, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing where the game goes. That's about all I got to say. Cool, Patrick. Um, I think I'm the resident hater on this game here. Um. I think, yeah, I think it's amazingly, like, well done for how early it is. Mm -hmm. the, everything, like, works for the most part. I think they should be, you know, applauded for how how well that launch went, mm -hmm. or that early access launch went. Um, it's nice to play an early access game that doesn't feel like it's completely half-baked. Um, I think the combat is so good and i think that's like the reason to play this game mm -hmm. if you want a game with good combat then it's that's why you should play this if if you're after anything else even like i don't know even i would even dare say like more vampire-y things outside of like not standing in sunlight i don't think this is the game for you like mm -hmm. If you want to play a survival game, this is not a survival game. If you want to play a game where, you know, you have to think about how you build out your base, I don't think this is that game either. Like, it's... If you want a fun combat game uh, with, like, a cool vampire skin, then this will really get your, get your blood pumping. But outside of that, I don't... It's not... It's not what I was hoping it would be, I mm. guess. Yeah. I'm still waiting for a vampire survival game. Cool. John? Uh, yeah, I think I agree with both of those points on it. Um, I would say, going back to the original comparison to Valheim, what I said earlier I, 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 is what's ringing in my mind now. It fills all the holes that Valheim doesn't have in it. And so if you're playing Valheim, but you don't like the combat system, uh and you want more direction in what you're doing, like less sandbox and more like here's a way to progress and feel, you know, like, yeah, okay, there's four bosses in Valheim to beat or whatever, but like here's a little bit more of a progress bar for killing bosses and things, then V Rising is a great game. Uh, and I would say it's probably the second best early release I have ever played. I think Risk of Rain 2 gets that because Risk of Rain 2 has... Had an incredible uh, yeah, early that's, release. That's, that's a good fair. point. Uh, Risk of Rain Two was yeah. basically done when they put it in early action. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but regard regardless, um, it's good. And and I would say V Rising is not a game. If I had read, if I knew everything about it that I know now and what it excels at, it's probably not a game I would have gotten into. Mm -hmm. But I have obviously really enjoyed my time with it. Have 
you know, have a desire to, to at least play through to the final bosses before calling it a day. Like, and I'm someone who abandons a lot of games. Uh, and it has, it has made me want to keep logging in and keep playing it in a way that is usually not something like e like eco i thought had a lot of great things going for it but it didn't hold my attention the way it did for the rest of you guys mm. um and this one has held my attention quite a bit more than i expected it to cool george uh yeah i think i would be probably more on the patrick side of the world where <clears throat> it's i agree it's a very polished early game early access game but yeah it, it just it scratches the itch in certain ways and then other ways there's just things missing or i think in conflict between pve and pvp mm. and you know there's certainly things like you said combat is fun um just you know sometimes just roaming around villages looking for materials you can just like kind of have a little adventure and it's fun but then you know, you run into a boss, you can't beat on your own, you need help to do it, and you can just get stuck, and then it stops being interesting because you can't build out your base in a meaningful way, and, you know, it loses steam there. Yeah. But um, the times that I have been on with other people kind of doing some upgrades, going out and fighting a boss together, it, you know, it, it is quite entertaining. Yeah. So I think I think you can easily pull you know, 50 hours of gameplay out of it, even in early access. Um, you know, it, it's certainly worth checking out. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I just want to yeah. make sure that that... My comments are not about, like, the game's quality. It's, it's, yeah. a, very, yeah. it's a very fine game, and I think it's very but fun to it's play. For. It's just... I just want people to know what they're getting yeah. into, I you know? Yeah. Very clear. Yeah. yeah, don't... Yeah, I think that bears repeating yeah this is not like the robust survival experience you might be looking for yep yeah but it's got a lot going for it definitely yeah uh i'll say in my final thoughts that yeah i i, I put a massive amount of time into this i i really found a lot of the systems compelling i think that that would have changed uh, i think there's like we've said this this does seem like a bunch of different not a bunch like there's a wide variety of ways you, you can interact with the rising um be it pvp versus pve be it uh the combat or the the you know base building crafting elements um but i think the one that kind of raises it above most of the games i've played is is, is the combat system and the diversity within that um yeah, I I also am super biased. Anytime I get to play a vampire, I'm I'm there. I want to um, I want to do that. Um, but yeah, this is like we like we said at the beginning. This is not Valheim with vampires. This is a, a MOBA with some light crafting and and survival elements, um, but compelling and for it, yeah. And uh, I think yeah, it scratches a particular itch. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So cool. That's great. Thank you all for uh, being here on the friend zone. I want to thank Kevin, Patrick, John, and George uh, for taking the time to talk about V Rising, a game that I thoroughly enjoyed. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Good job. Thanks, everybody. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoy this content. If you do, follow, like, and subscribe to me on YouTube and Twitch so you can see more great content like this. I'll have links down below in the description. Thanks again. I hope you have a super day. I hope you have a super week. And I hope you have a super day. Bye! <laughs>